Hello everyone and welcome back to another cello technique lesson. In today's lesson we're gonna cover study number 32 by Louis Fillar, Studies of the Young Cellist, and this study is for the rhythm. It's not the most difficult exercise of this book, but I'm gonna give you a few points to level up this study for you. If by any chance you don't have the PDF or the book of this great cello method, you can always find it in the link in the video description below. So click on the link, open it, download it, print it out, and then practice it together with me. Before we continue with this lesson, I would like to announce one small thing, but it's just a big thank you to Mr. David Otier and Mr. Leonardo Paredes Pernia. I hope that I pronounce your names right that are my new Patreon supporters and I'm really grateful for your support because this helps my channel to grow a lot and to make more awesome videos. If you want to become a Patreon supporter as well to support my work and my channel to make more great videos and content, there is a link in the video description below. You can click on it and then you'll find different options. So again, dear Mr. Otier and Mr. Pernia, thank you so much for your generous support. If this is the first time you come across to my channel and you like the content that you see, then consider to subscribe. Well, now with that said, let's go right into the exercise. Right, so this is not the most complicated, most complex exercise of this book, but I need to mention you a couple of essential and crucial things that you need to keep in mind. I know it is a study for the rhythm, but the things that I'm going to say, it's for the right and the left hand, because if you're going to avoid what I'm going to say in today's lesson, then you're gonna have a really hard time playing this exercise in rhythm. But okay, let's not waste time and let's go right into the points that I have for you. So number one, make sure that you have a metronome next to you. The metronome is an essential tool for our studies in order to put the puzzle pieces together. You can use the old school metronome, but if you don't have one of these, there are plans of apps that you can download for free on your mobile. Me personally, I like to use an app called Soundcorset. I find this app great and besides that this app has a metronome, the app also offers a tuner which can always come in handy. I'll put a link in the video description below so you can also click on it, download it on your mobile and use it for free. For some of you this study might be a little bit tricky because of its against the beats and what do I mean with against the beats. So let me play it from the beginning and I'll show you. Let me start from the very first measure. So pay attention. So the notation is on three fourth, right? So one, two, three. One, two, three. Mm. 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 So see, did you notice where were these against the beats? This mm. So this mm, it's the one, right? So one. One, one. So these are the against the beats. I don't know, there must be another term for it, another word for it. English, unfortunately, is not my first language, so I cannot really find the specific word for it. So these are these against the beat, as I call them, my vocabulary. But if this tempo, the original tempo, what I played in the study played through is too fast for you, Take a slower tempo, take a slow tempo, the tempo that you feel comfortable with. You can do it like that. So one, two, three. Dum, tum, 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 tum. 
so that you really get these against the beats so that you understand what how it works how this mechanism works once you feel comfortable once you play the whole study through in this slow tempo then you can speed up things like one two three mm. 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 fine feeling better with that if you feel better with this then you can speed up speed up speed up until you come to the original tempo which is allegro moderato and once you have practiced all this with metronome, then on one certain point, take the metronome out and try it by yourself. Be disciplined. So really like one, two, three, one, two, three. Because, okay, we cannot, you know, play all the time with metronome, right? And now we come to point number two. So in this point, we will talk about the right hand. So for the bow, the right use of bow, the right articulation of it, and the right amount, and so on. Because without that, things can be really tricky. So we see here on the score, at the very first measure, it's marked FR, fr, right? So FR means am frosch, which is German for at the frog of the bow, or in other words, at the beginning of the bow. Well, now I'm not 100% sure to play the study really extremely close to the frog because we might have get this sound. So when we play extremely close at the frog here, we might get this. So see, this is a sound that we want to avoid, this scratchy, you know, this blocked stiff sound. This we want to avoid. So why we don't find another place near the frog maybe? Like, what about here? So, not really at the middle, but of course, uh, in the lower part of the bow. So here maybe. And so on. See how it sounds already? It sounds a little bit more free, right? Because if we are here, really extremely at the frog, it sounds limited. So try to find a place that suits you better. For me, it's the best, it's around here. So where we have this part over here, where it ends, I like to start more or less over there. So. Well, so you find yourself where it will suit best. Of course, don't play too much at the middle of the bow or at the end, because no, it's marked on the score FR, frosh, beginning, uh, frog of the bow, which is here in the lower part of the bow, all right? So it's about experimenting to find out what suits you best, what is the best sound and so on. Now we are at point number three and maybe this is one of the most important points and this is string crossing. Here in this exercise, we have plans of string crossing and this is the one that really can screw you up if you don't do it right, okay? So the key here is be ready and always check what's happening next. So always watch what is the next note. So that's why key is to practice very slowly and repeating many times. Yes, that's right. Repeating five times, 10 times until you get it right. It's just like a kid, you know, learning to ride a bicycle. It will fall down in the beginning, but eventually after some training, it goes natural automatically. And then the kid rides the bicycle on two wheels. So I like to practice that way. So let me show you how I would practice this. Ah, so here I found the first one. So, okay. So I make sure that on the moment I play the G note, so on the G string, I'm ready. So it's about actually right hand anticipation. So when you finish playing, you go ready to the A string and there you go. Same here, I'm ready. Same here. There, actually, I screwed up because it was not a huge string crossing. It was just 
G string to the D string. But anyway, you get my point. So here, your homework in this exercise is to find out where we have these big distances or big jumps and do them separately. So let me show you the first couple of measures. So just that you know uh, how to proceed afterwards. So the first one would be that one. Okay, that was fine. Let's go to the next one. Ready? Next one. Ready. Okay, the next measure doesn't have a big distance. Now we are at the last measure of the first line. So it's all about being ready in advance. So that's why again for the third time I repeat Practice slowly, practice where it hurts the most and repeat it, repeat it, repeat it until you feel familiar with this movement, all right? So, and now point number four and the last point. So we're not going to talk anymore about the right hand. We're gonna jump right over to the left hand, which is also very important because we want to play this exercise accurate, clean and with a good intonation, right? So there are two key words for the left hand, which is left anticipation and strong fingers. These two things are crucial for the left hand if you want to play the study accurate, clean and in tune. Because when this is not developed, that strong finger thing and the left hand anticipation, then we're gonna have problems like this, for instance. Let me start from the beginning. Okay, of course I'm exaggerating. As usual, I, as usually I always over exaggerate, but it's good so that you see the difference. Now let's take a closer look to my left hand and this time with left hand anticipation and strong fingers. So you know what exactly I mean with that. So you need to react sharply, you need to react fast. So you need to be in a state of alert. So really your, your hand has to move like very quickly. In the beginning, it might be confusing, of course, but again, after some training, you'll just get you know, used to it. So another great way that I love to develop strong fingers are double stops. Double stops is a great way not only to strengthen up your fingers but also to clean up some intonation problems. Let me show you how I would practice that. Well, and that's actually it for today's lesson. Again, as I mentioned before, not the most complicated exercise, but still keep in mind what I told today, all right? I hope that today's lesson was very helpful and useful for you in order to level up a couple of things of your playing. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and I will see you next time with exercise number 33 by Louis Fiar, Studies of the Young Cellist. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.